Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we show you the exact tools and resources we use within our real estate business. Today's video is specific to Podio, and we're going to be diving into a request I get all the time. So whenever I'm building a custom Podio workspace, I'm always asked, how can we build in checklists? Okay, so uh, on the one hand, we can always assign tasks within Podio. We can have triggers that assign new tasks to people. But sometimes those tasks get really overwhelming, especially when we are in a real estate business and we have all those checklist items that we need to get done, for example, before closing, or maybe in the case that I'm gonna to demonstrate today to prepare a project. So for example, uh, you're gonna close on a deal, you need to get title insurance, you need to get homeowner's insurance, you need to get all of these things. And instead of assigning all of those tasks, Instead, what we do is we assign one task to, say, complete the closing checklist, and then we have somewhere else within Podio that we manage that list of things and understand whether they're complete or not. So I'm going to show you that methodology today and how I do it. Uh, we're going to use project management as the template for it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm in the uh, project management workspace for Podio that uh, you can get if you'd like. Just contact me and you can get this set up in this template. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build in within my projects app this checklist methodology so that I can show you exactly how uh, you can put it into either your own project workspace or if you want to use this methodology to close on deals you can use it too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use status as a trigger and I'm going to trigger a, a task to be assigned to uh, complete some kind of checklist. Now I recommend that you create a section within your app for that checklist. So I'm going to do that right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this is like we are getting a project ready to start type checklist. So I'm going to make a new section. And uh, I'm really just going to call it, let's see, I'll call it active project checklist. So this is going to be a checklist that I need to complete as a project becomes active. Okay. So that's my new section. And the key to the checklist, in my opinion, the way I like to do it, is with category fields and or link fields and or date fields. However, what I do here is I take this category and this is the name of the checklist item. So for example, if I'm doing a, scope, um, a project and I say it's now active, I might want to make sure the scope of work comp is complete. I also might want to say budget finalized. Potentially I want to say, um, 3D drawings complete. And then maybe I want to link to one or more of these things. So maybe I'll say link to 3D drawings. Now in most cases, the checklist is a lot longer than this, but I'm just gonna do these so that you can see how the methodology works. Now, I need to put in some options for my categories. And what I almost always do is I go no, yes, and a. Okay, I usually turn no to red, and a to gray. All right, so I'm gonna do that here. All right, so let's go here. And the key to this is that we make these fields mandatory, they're required. And what that does is it will default the answer to your first option, okay? going on there. So it's going to default the answer to this to no. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to force my users when it's time to complete this checklist, I'm going to force them to either select yes or NA to indicate that they've completed this task or in some cases it might not be applicable. All right. So that's the first step is getting your checklist set up in the Podio system. So let's see what that looks like. Now when you set it up for the first time on say like an active project, the, this default won't work. So just go ahead and click them so that we can demo with this. And so that's how your your project is gonna start out. And then when it's time to say complete the, the um, active project checklist, I'm gonna have to go through and, and do something with those. So let's go to Globiflow and let's refresh so that it now has those, um, those new fields in it. And a lot of times people have problems with Globiflow, that's almost the always the case that they haven't refreshed. So the first thing I'm gonna do it's going to create a new flow that once the project moves to active, okay, I'm going to assign a task to complete that checklist. Okay, so once the status has changed and the status is equal to active, I'm going to 
And I'm not sure if everybody knows this either. I like to use a team roles app. Let me just look at my, actually no, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign it to the project manager and that's a little bit easier. All right, so assign task to the project manager and this is gonna be complete active project checklist. And let's make it due today. Okay, so just to demonstrate how that works, if I was say an evaluation or whatever and I move to active, what the, the system will do is it'll go ahead and find who the project manager is and assign a task to complete the project checklist. That easy. In which case I would go down here and now I have these things to do. Okay, now the, um, the cool thing about this checklist is we can create validation to make sure that these things are done. Okay, so now I can go to this task and say, I'm done with it. I've done everything that I've been asked to do. However, I'm not done with it because I haven't indicated that the scope is done, that the budget's finalized, that I've linked to everything. Okay, so I can say I'm done and my supervisor and my team might think I'm done, but I'm obviously not. So what I like to do is build in what I call validation to check have the system check to make sure that, that checklist is complete. All right, so I'm gonna uncheck that task for now, go back to my project, and I'm gonna show you how to build in this validation to kind of force compliance among you and your team to get things done that you think need to be done. Okay, so how do we build in that validation? Well, we need to trigger it on something. Now in this case, I created a task called complete project checklist. So I can grab that, copy it, and I can trigger a flow on task completion. Okay, so when a task is completed, filter it when the task title is equal to com active, uh, complete active project checklist. That's when this task will start. I'm sorry, this flow will start. And what this flow is, is it, it's a check to make sure those fields are complete. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's a little bit of coding, but don't worry you can just copy mine. You won't need to learn how to do this code, just copy what I have, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new variable. So we can do custom variable, and we're gonna call it error, so E-R-R, -R, just like for error, kind of, okay? And we're gonna start it out with just open quotes, and that's it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another variable, again, error, and now we're gonna build upon it. Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to check the system to see if certain fields are complete. Okay, so the first one is that scope of work. Okay, scope of work complete. Does this equal no? Okay, if so, I'm going to do error, dot means add to it, open quotes, scope of work, what I'm doing is I'm saying, if this is not in, I'm going to start building up this error message that is going to now include scope of work, okay? And then I'm going to do this, which gives me a new line. Okay, now if it's not no, meaning it either equals yes or NA, then all I'm gonna do is keep the error from the previous, all right? So that might make sense, it might not. I'm pretty much building up this error message. All right, I'm gonna do it four times because I have four fields that are required. Now, once you do it once, right, copy and paste. Okay, now it's not scope of work anymore. It is instead, what do I have, budget, I think? Budget finalized, right? And now if budget finalized equals to no, I'm gonna build upon this error message and I'm gonna say budget finalized. And you might wanna use the exact field names for those, okay? Now I got two more to do. Again, copy paste. And now the field I'm gonna bring in next is uh, 3D drawings complete. Whoops, put it in the wrong spot there. You know, it's not rocket science to do this Globy Flow things. What I always tell my clients is that once you get something in Globiflow and it works, hold on to it, know where it is, maybe write it down somewhere so that you can use it again. You know, I learned this once and then I'd copy it. 
every time after. All right, now the next one's going to be just a little more complicated. We're going to say um, that link to 3D drawings. Okay, so I'm going to grab this one. Oops. Okay. Now, link to 3D drawings has no option to be no, but it does have an option to be blank, right? So instead of having no, I'll do blank. And I could say that, well, that's it. But what if there's a project that for whatever reason doesn't have 3D drawings? I'm gonna drive myself nuts in that I'm never gonna be able to link to it, to a Google Drive folder or file, okay? So it really won't work. It's possible that this one up here, the 3D drawings complete is marked as NA, right? That would mean I don't need 3D drawings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an and. So if the link is blank and my 3D drawings complete, does not equal NA, meaning there's no reason the, the link shouldn't be there, then I'm gonna put that in there, okay? So I've built up my error message, and now what we do is we, we do a quick check here, and we do an if statement. Okay, so now if my error message does not equal blank, meaning it's got something in there, well, then let's do a comment to somebody. Okay, so we might want to say one or more active project items remains incomplete. See details below. And below, what we'll do is we'll bring in our error message, which should be a checklist of all those things that are incomplete. All right, and then what I might do is you can assign the task again, right? Because they marked it complete, and we might want to say uh, it's not yet. You know, check and update active project checklist. So it's not done, right? Now maybe it's a mistake, meaning they just forgot to click those things. Okay, whatever. Click them and, and come back. Okay. Now if this is blank, it's just going to not do anything, right? The validation won't need to run. All right, so let's see this in action. Go ahead and save it, and let's move to our project. Okay, so if I mark this complete, hopefully I get some kind of message telling me not so fast, all right, because I haven't done these things yet. So let's go to the task, complete active project checklist, mark it complete. All right, so the system is going through and checking and saying, hey, one or more active project items remains incomplete. And then it's assigning me a new task to figure it out and do it again. So if I just refresh, I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to mark this incomplete. What you might want to do is I'm realizing now is make this task the same verbiage as this so that the validation carries forward. Okay, and that was a mistake I should have done. But um, so now let's say that I say this one's done, 3D drawings is done, budget finalized link is not. So let's see how that works. All right, so now it should tell me that budget finalized and the link to 3D drawings is not there. Now remember what we did if, if um, 3D drawings is NA, this link can be blank, no problem, right? All right, so let's see, and again, that should have been the same. So now it should be just budget finalized, all right? So if I can just get that budget finalized done, yes. And let's say that I do need 3D drawings and it's like, I just need some kind of websites, let's do Google. And the reason I do this, links, is for documents, right? You can always attach files at the bottom of uh, an uh, item, but I like to use links so I can put them in specific places, okay? And so now, if I say I'm done with that task, the system shouldn't do anything because it's all done and my checklist is complete. So what this allows us to do is to house several checklist items under one task, okay, and have the system do a validation to check that we did it all. So what you can do is you can have a nice long list of 10, 15 items, and your users need to go through and move it from no. Some things might be not applicable, that's fine, but what I like to do is again force them by defaulting it to no, they have to move it to NA, and they have to populate it, they have to think about it, okay. You can do this with dates, you can do this with numbers, you can do this with just about any of the field types within Podio. And um, use that code to kind of check and see if things are done. This is kind of an advanced technique, 
But as you can see, once you do it once or twice, it's not going to be that difficult to build into all of your apps. Again, applications would include getting a deal ready for close. Uh, maybe it's setting up a new potential customer in your CRM system. Maybe it's listing a property. It's maybe having an open house, right? Making sure that uh, the yard is mowed and that the staging is done and all that is complete. You can do it virtually anywhere. And some clients of mine really love it and will build it into almost every app that they do. So I hope you enjoyed that a little bit longer than normal. Thanks for sticking in there with me. Let me know if you have questions on this. I will post the coding for the validation so that you can use it in your own. If you'd like to check out the project management template, just give me a message on YouTube or uh, go to IncomeDigs.com, submit an inquiry form, and we can uh, show that to you and potentially get you up and running on it. And until next time, just uh, keep pounding out on Podio QuickBooks. Let me know if you have any questions any comments, uh, anything that you'd like to see, I'm happy to respond to that. All right, thank you.